guys, my name is Sophie and I'm our director here at Journey Kids. Thanks for joining us this morning. This month, we'll be talking about peace. Here in Journey Kids, we learn that peace comes from knowing that we are loved and cared for by our friends, our families, and most importantly, by God. So let's explore together how we can bring more peace into our hearts and share it with others. Today I'm thankful for the hope that you gave me For the cross when you saved me You're the friend I call my own Now I know I'm not alone So thankful for your love on display And it will never go away You're the reason for my song Now I know we all belong You show me what peace is all about It's my turn to go and live it out Jesus, you're the Without a doubt I'm gonna love The way you first loved me I'm gonna praise The one who set me free We gotta show Forgiveness that we need Like I know you did for me I believe Jesus is peace That you gave me For the cross when you saved me You're the friend I call my own Now I know I'm not alone So thankful for your love on display And it will never go away You're the reason for my song Now I know we all belong You showed me what peace is all about It's my turn to go and live it out Jesus, you're the way without a doubt is all about and it's my turn to go and live it out jesus you're the way without a doubt Hey everybody, welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about the story of Easter. Also, how you'll still be finding all of this stuff around the house at Christmas. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about Easter, which is celebrating that Jesus is alive. We said celebrating. Isn't this supposed to have stuff in it? Of course, we're gonna dye Easter eggs. Oh, that's very traditional of you. Not these eggs. Hmm. Well, these are just boring, regular eggs. What? My friend, let me properly introduce to you the humble egg. So much more than meets the eye. 
We start with the shell, but directly underneath, there's a stretchy membrane. This holds in the egg white, or albumin. And finally, we have the yolk in the very heart of the egg. Okay, so shell, membrane, white, yolk. Got it! Shall we do it? Let's make it! Okay, we've got vinegar and food coloring. Where's the hot water? We're not using water to dye these eggs. Ah, the plot thickens. Step one, fill six glass jars halfway up with vinegar. All vinegar? Yep. All right. Step two, put about five drops of color in each jar. Step three, lower one egg into each jar. On it. Ooh, done. All right, how long do we need to wait? Uh, five minutes, 10 minutes? Three days. What? That's how long we have to wait. Three days? Yep, and speaking of three days, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today we're in Luke, the third book of the New Testament. In the beginning, God created everything. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God loves us way too much to leave us on our own. So God chose one family, the Israelites, and promised to bless the whole world through them. Many, many, many years later, God fulfilled that promise by sending Jesus, God's very own son. Jesus traveled the land, teaching and healing. He showed perfectly what it means to love God and love others. But the religious leaders were upset. When Jesus entered Jerusalem for Passover week, they made a plan to get rid of him. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. Today we're celebrating Easter, which is pretty much the most amazing day in the history of history. But before we can get to Sunday, we have to rewind a few days to one of the darkest moments in history. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the crowds cheered him and gathered early each morning at the temple to hear him preach. But behind the scenes, one of Jesus' own friends, Judas, made a deal with the religious leaders to betray Jesus. On Thursday evening, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his friends. Jesus offered them wine and then broke bread and gave it to his friends as well. This represented how Jesus would give up his life for us. After this meal, Jesus and his friends went up to the Mount of Olives, where Jesus laid out his heart before God in prayer. Father, if you are willing, take this cup of suffering away from me, but do what you want, not what I want. As Jesus finished praying, a group of religious leaders and guards arrived, led by Judas. Now Jesus could easily have called on angels to stop the men, but instead, he allowed himself to be arrested. Jesus' followers panicked and ran away. Jesus was given a fake trial. On Friday morning, the religious leaders sent Jesus to Pilate, the Roman governor. I have found no basis for your charges against him. But the crowd cried out for Jesus to be killed. And eventually Pilate handed Jesus over to be taken away. Jesus had done nothing wrong, but the soldiers nailed him to a rough wooden cross. At noon, darkness covered the land, and about three o'clock, Jesus cried out, Father, into your hands I commit my life. And then, Jesus died. The darkness was complete. If Jesus was dead, how could he be the one God sent to rescue us? That evening, several of Jesus' followers took his body and laid it in a garden tomb, a cave cut into the rock. A giant stone was rolled to block the entrance. It seemed like the end. But remember, the promises God made so long ago to bless the whole world, to send a rescuer, 
God keeps every promise, which means this story was not finished. Through the dark of Friday night and Saturday and Saturday night, Jesus' friends hid out, afraid that they might be arrested next. Some of the women who followed Jesus wanted to place spices on his body, which was the tradition at that time. But they couldn't do any work on the Sabbath, Saturday, so they waited. And early on Sunday morning, the women gathered their supplies and hurried through the darkened streets to the garden and the tomb. Wait, what about the stone? Maybe we can roll it to the side? If we all work together. I don't know, it's huge. But when the women arrived at the tomb, they discovered something incredible. Look, the stone is gone. Should we go in? Of course, we have to. What the women discovered was unbelievable. He's gone. As they stared in shock, two brilliant angels suddenly stood beside them. The women fell down with their faces to the ground. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you that on the third day he would rise from the dead? As the angels spoke, the women did recall what Jesus had told them. They were filled with joy and raced back to where their friends, including Peter, were staying. He's alive! Jesus is alive! Don't joke about that. But the tomb is empty. We saw angels. They told us. It's not possible. Peter had to see for himself. He ran to the tomb and saw the linen strips, but no angels. He left wondering what on earth had happened. And the situation got even more confusing later that day when two of Jesus' followers reported that they had met Jesus along the road to Emmaus. We told you. What Cleopas says proves it. Maybe someone stole his body to cause trouble. Are you saying we didn't tell you the truth? No, but... As they tried to figure out what was going on, Jesus himself appeared in the room with them. What? How? May you have peace. Jesus' friends were surprised and terrified. I mean, some thought Jesus was a ghost. Why are you troubled? Look at my hands and feet. It's really me. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have a body. Jesus showed the places in his hands and feet that were scarred by nails. His friends were excited, but they still had a hard time believing. But how? This is too good to be true. <laughs> uh, do you have anything to eat? They gave Jesus some cooked fish and he ate it. Definitely not something a ghost could do. Then Jesus helped them to understand what was happening. This is what I told you. Everything written about me must come true. The Messiah will suffer. He will rise from the dead on the third day. People from every nation will hear it, beginning at Jerusalem. You have seen these things with your own eyes. Jesus is alive. In fact, more than 500 people saw Jesus after he was raised to life. He proved that everything God says is true, and death is not the end, but that is the end of our story today. Can you imagine what it would have been like to have Jesus just show up in the room? I get why his friends weren't sure he was real at first. Yeah, and everything had gone so wrong. And suddenly everything was completely right. Yeah, it's the best plot twist ever. So what's our part in the story? Well, there is one thing to remember today, that Jesus is alive. When you choose to believe in and follow Jesus, you make him the foundation of your life. You can trust him with everything. Every choice you have to make. Every hard or confusing thing that happens. Every relationship. Every question. Following Jesus won't make your life perfect, but it does mean that Jesus will walk with you through every single moment and help you carry the hard things. It means that in the end, God will make everything right again. That is a major cause for celebration. And you can share it with everyone you know. You got that right. Happy Easter. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Jesus is alive. He's the light of the world. The brightest light ever. 
after the darkest three days. Oh, hey, about three days. Do we really have to wait that long for this, um, experiment? I actually had the same experiment set up three days ago. So these eggs have been in vinegar for three days? They look a little weird and bigger. Well, first we have to clean them off in water. Okay. Whoa. What happened to the shell? So, the vinegar dissolved the eggshell, then the membrane allowed the vinegar through to color the egg white. I love science. Try this. Like this. No way! Bouncy Easter <laughs> eggs, that's awesome sauce! Whoa. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next time. time. This is amazing. Oh, let me get the last one out. Ooh, yeah. how durable are these things? They're pretty durable. Okay. Well, why oh. now?